Hey, I'm Adam Jusko from ProudMoney.com. In this video, we are going to compare YouTube TV to Hulu with live TV to AT&T TV Now to Sling to cable and we're going to talk about a few other services that are out there as well but before we do any of that i'm going to ask you to please subscribe to this youtube channel if you have not already and if you have already i thank you for doing so so it is 2020 and it is time to take another look at how these streaming services stack up this is a market that changes very, very quickly. In fact, every time I do one of these videos, it's not very long, sometimes only weeks before something changes and the prices I'm discussing have gone up or some other uh, aspect has changed. So I'm doing this video in the beginning of 2020 and hopefully it will hold up for a while, but we shall see. So we're gonna look at all these different services and I'm also gonna talk about uh, uh, cable as compared to them. So when a lot of these streaming services came on the market, it was to sort of undercut cable and offer you some of the uh, you know cable channels that you were getting before for a cheaper price but what has happened is a lot of them are getting more and more expensive and they're starting to rival the prices of cable for the most part still a little bit less but we're getting a little bit closer to that with some of these services. So we're gonna look at the cost, we're gonna look at what you get for each one of these, and also we'll see how they stack up with what uh, cable may be offering. Now I have some experience with multiple of these streaming services, so part of this is going to be a review of what I know of them, but part of it is also going to be just looking at the costs. So a little on my history, I cut the cord probably, I don't know, a year and a half to two years ago, and initially I wanted to, you know, obviously cut down that cable bill, and so what I did was I got some TV antennas to try to pick up my local channels, and then I got Sling TV, which was the cheapest of the services out there at the time to supplement that with some other you know cable-ish channels that I wanted so I wanted ESPN and I wanted some other things as well so I bought Sling TV and then I did the antennas for me unfortunately where I live the antennas didn't do a great job and Sling TV did not offer any of my local channels so finally after I kind of got frustrated with the uh, antenna plus Sling situation I got rid of Sling I moved on to to direct TV now which what I which is now AT&T TV now and I actually wasn't too unhappy with direct TV now I thought it was doing the job I was okay with the price it gave me my local channels and then of course they changed it completely uh, to a whole new package a whole new pricing structure and so then I skipped off to Hulu plus live TV which has also been okay that's what I'm using at the moment but they just jacked up their prices by 10 bucks as I make this video $10 per month or $120 per year, which is another way definitely of looking at it. And so now I am back in the market to check out what everyone is offering and again, figure out if I'm gonna make a switch. All right, let's start with Hulu Plus Live TV. As we start here in 2020, it is $54.99 a month. It was $44.99 a month, or at least that's the price I was paying, and they just increased it 10 bucks. So $54.99, I don't love nearly as much as $44.99. So that's an increase of 10 bucks a month or $120 per year. So what you're getting with Hulu plus live TV is you're getting the original Hulu, which is sort of the Netflix competitor that has original uh, programming like Handmaid's Tale and, uh, you know, that backlog of TV shows and other movies and that sort of thing. And then you're getting the live TV portion, which is sort of the replacement for cable aspect. So you're getting your local TV channels and then you're getting a lot of the sort of major networks that you might expect uh, from a cable offering ESPN, Disney, Food Network, all those sorts of things. One sticking point in our family has been the fact that uh, PBS is not part of this and it's not a part of most of these streaming services and we had a very hard time getting PBS when we tried to use antennas to pick up our local PBS station. We're not huge PBS watchers but every once in a while we want to watch it and my wife was very annoyed that she has not been able to so that is not part of this. No HBO or any other services are part of that at $54.99 either. So again, $54.99 per month. I liked it okay at $44.99, was willing to keep paying that $54.99 has sent me back to the drawing board.
All right, next up, let's talk about YouTube TV. YouTube TV, as I am making this video, $49.99 per month, essentially 50 bucks, essentially $5 less than Hulu Plus Live TV. YouTube really doesn't have a product that I would compare to Hulu in terms of the original programming and sort of the library of back, uh, back catalog or whatever you want to call it. There are some original things from YouTube, but really what you're paying for here is that access to the local channels and those major cable networks that maybe you're trying to replace if you have cut the cord. So for 50 bucks, you're getting your local channels, then you're getting things like ESPN and Disney and Food Network and a bunch of others as well. YouTube TV within the last year has also added PBS, and I believe they are the only streaming service that has PBS, so if you want access to that and are not having uh, much luck getting it otherwise, that is part of YouTube TV as well. You're not getting any uh, extras here. You're not getting HBO or anything like that within that $50 price. Now, one thing I want to say here before I go further is with all of these streaming services, you know, I'm kind of doing a little laundry list here of the cable networks or the traditional cable networks uh, that may be included with them and saying, you know, a bunch of others or etc. or whatever. But if there are one or two uh, networks that you particularly want, you should look closely before you, uh, you know, go with any of these streaming services because even though it might look like, ah, this list is the same as that list, many times there are going to be, you know, one or two things that aren't in one place and are in another, like the History Channel's over here, but uh, it's not over here, or the Lifetime's over here, or it's not over there, or whatever. So if there are some things you specifically want, make sure that you look closely for them because there are some differences that don't always make a lot of sense. But anyway, YouTube TV for me actually looks pretty good because at 50 bucks per month, it's $5 cheaper than what I have uh, been paying for. I'm gonna get that access to PBS that my wife wants and has been unhappy about ever since we uh, cut the cable cord. And uh, I don't really care too much about the original programming that Hulu had because we just essentially weren't watching it. So I wasn't really unhappy so much with Hulu plus live TV until they increase the price. So YouTube TV may be the place that I'm gonna go next. All right, let's look next at AT&T TV Now, which is not easy to say, is not a great name. It used to be Direct TV Now, which wasn't all that great of a name either, but it was a heck of a lot better than AT&T TV Now. So anyway, AT&T TV Now costs $65 a month, and it is a little bit of a different animal than these others, obviously more expensive than the first two I talked about, but that $65 includes HBO within the price. Now, you don't have a choice to take HBO out or put it in. It's part of the package. So you pay $65, you're getting HBO, and then you're getting sort of what we have talked about, your local channels and then a selection of sort of the major cable networks that maybe you would be trying to replace if you cut the cord. Now, AT&T TV Now does have fewer of those extra channels at that $65 price. Now, it does have things like uh, ESPN and CNN and has Nick and Nick Jr., which I think the uh, first two did not. So if that's, you know, one of the uh, channels that you are trying to zero in on, if you have, you know, kids that love those channels, then that may be something to consider as well. But then you're going to lose things like Food Network and History Channel and HGTV and that kind of stuff. Those things are not included in there. So it's sort of a weird bundle in a way, 65 bucks, they force HBO on you either way, and then you get some of those cable channels, but not as many as you would with some of these other services. Now, when I look at this, I say, okay, $65 a month for, you know, uh, some of those channels plus HBO, I could also look at YouTube TV at essentially 50 bucks a month and I could add HBO now and get HBO directly that way. It's streaming services that streaming service that offers directly, and essentially that would be another 15 bucks a month. So 50 plus 15 is 65. The cost of at and TV now is 65, but with YouTube TV and HBO, I would actually be getting more of those, uh, you know, traditional cable channels that I might want, although I wouldn't be getting the Nick and Nick Jr. So these are all the calculations that come into play when you try and, you know, put these uh, packages together. But anyway, at and TV now, 65 bucks, HBO, attached to the other pieces there. Uh, you know, if you really want HBO and this is convenient for you, it makes sense. If you don't want HBO and you don't want to, you know, pay more to get it, then you're not necessarily going to want this. at and TV now does have uh, bigger packages that have more channels, but then you're getting up into the 80, 90, 100 plus range in order to get those. 
All right, and then the last of what I would consider sort of the big four streaming services that people look at when they cut the cord is Sling TV. Now, Sling TV is a little different animal than the others. It is cheaper, but it gives you less for that money. So it depends on what you are looking for. Like I said earlier, I started out with Sling TV when I thought I was going to use TV antennas to catch my local channels. Uh, and then I just wanted some of those cable channels on top of it, for me, I had a hard time really uh, making those antennas work for me at my house in particular. But if they work for you, maybe Sling is something that would make sense. Now, Sling has sort of a convoluted pricing structure that I'm not always happy about. They offer a blue package, a orange package, or a package that is blue and orange together. And, uh, you know, if there are only one or two channels you want, maybe you'll get lucky and they fit in only the blue or only the orange. But it's also possible that you'll have to buy both in order to get everything you want. So the blue package or the orange package, either one of those is going to cost 30 bucks per month or you get both of them and pay $45 for month, per month. So the blue package includes ESPN and Disney, but doesn't include things like uh, Nick Jr. or the NFL Network, and then on the opposite side, on the orange package, you can get Nick Jr. and you can get the NFL Network, but you're not gonna get ESPN and you're not going to get Disney. So, you know, they kind of have split it down the middle in a way with the desirable uh, channels that a lot of people want probably to drive you to the $45 package, but if one of those other packages works for you, then 30 bucks a month is gonna give you what you need. If you're using an antenna for your local channels or whatever else, then you're gonna get away a lot cheaper than if you went with something like Hulu or uh, YouTube TV or AT&T TV. Now you're gonna pay a lot less and maybe you know get everything that you want. I was happy with Sling as a service, but it did not have the local channel, so it is only something to supplement if you are able to get your local channels elsewhere. That's why I moved on, but I would uh, uh, recommend it if you only need some of those other traditional cable channels. Now, if you're looking to cut the cord from cable, you might not want to hear about cable, but like I said, earlier, a lot of these uh, packages are starting to go up in price to the extent that they may be rivaling what you're paying for cable. So you may be surprised to find out that it's not as much of a deal as you thought to cut the cord. So in my area, if I wanted to get a cable package that gave me most of the channels that I would want, the ESPN, the Disney, uh, Food Network, HGTV, all that kind of stuff, all that big cable package that you would expect, it would cost me about $70 a month in my area. My local cable provider is uh, Cox Cable, which is kind of a regional. It's not national, but it's uh, fairly large. I think AT&T is in my area, but then other people are going to have Spectrum, and obviously there are many others as well. So if you are doing this comparison or you're looking at these streaming services, you should look at how they compare to cable as well. Now, cable can be annoying, obviously, but cable does have some upsides in the fact that it doesn't require you to have the internet to use it. So if your internet service is spotty or whatever and you end up you know, having uh, issues with these streaming services, well then that could be something that is frustrating to you. So maybe having cable and having a more reliable uh, connection and signal is something that could be worth it for me. 70 bucks for the cable, still more than I want to pay, but it's getting a lot closer with some of these streaming services where I could see myself in another, you know, year, 18 months, whatever, depending on how these prices go up, going back to cable, which, you know, I never thought that I would be saying just a couple of years ago. All right, I want to quickly touch on a few other services that I know some people are using. The first one is Philo TV, sort of a sling competitor, 20 bucks per month as I make this video. It only has about 50 some channels. It is a uh, you know replacement for those sort of major cable channels, although it doesn't have all of them, so you should definitely check the list and see if it works for you. But if you're someone who's using an antenna for local channels and you want to supplement it, Philo is another option that you might go for in instead of Sling. Next is Fubo TV, a streaming service that started as a sports-oriented service at a much cheaper price. It has now expanded, and it is essentially a competitor to YouTube TV and Hulu Plus Live TV and AT&T Now. It offers you your local channels as well as a lot of the major cable channels, and it does have more sports channels than some of these other services do, although it doesn't have ESPN, so if that's something that's attractive to you, that's sort of a 
weird one to not have included in this particular service. 55 bucks per month, so it's certainly not cheap. Uh, you'd have to look at it and you know look at the channels that are available to you and see if it is better for the uh, you know your viewing habits. And then finally, a service that I just recently discovered called Vidgo is sort of a sling or philo competitor. It's $39.99 a month. It has no local, but it has a lot of those uh, you know, traditional cable networks that you might be looking for. ESPN, NFL Network, Nick and Nick Jr., the Disney channels, and many others as well. So that is another possibility to take a look at if you've got the local handled, but you're looking to supplement it with what are traditionally thought of as cable channels. All right, that's pretty much it for me. It is time to sign on for YouTube TV and see how that goes. The nice thing about these streaming services is they're very easy to get in and out of. You just cancel one and you can move on to the next. Cable oftentimes is not so easy to get in and out of. Anyway, YouTube TV is a little cheaper than the Hulu Plus Live TV that I have been using. It's got PBS. Uh, I didn't really care about the Hulu originals and the, you know, any movie catalog that they had. I only watched the first Handmaid's Tale. I never watched it again. So for me, YouTube TV is the place that I am going to try next. I like some of the other channels that they have as well, but sort of, I don't want to say bottom line, but one of the things that is uh, definitely in consideration here, again, as we get into 2020, the prices are going up on all of these things, so cutting the cord is not as much of a no-brainer as it used to be. So if you have cable and you're thinking of getting rid of it, make sure that you feel comfortable with what you're going into because, you know, six months down the line, you might think, well, this is just a big pain in the butt. I got to go through the Roku or the whatever in order to, you know, get to my stuff. I should have just kept cable. You never know when you might get to that point. I could see myself getting there in the near future. Anyway, that is it for this video. If you have any thoughts about the best streaming service, the ones that have worked the best for you, I would love to hear about it in the comments section below. Or if you have any questions, now that I have tried three out of the four sort of big name services, I would be happy to try to answer those. Put it all in the comments and I or others in the uh, community here, I'm sure would be happy to answer it. Otherwise, I thank you for watching. And as always, go to Proud Money where we hardly ever talk about streaming services. And usually we talk about credit cards and personal finance and all kinds of other fun stuff too. Thanks for watching. Bye.